All right, so let's talk about two towns or cities or states that are trending certainly in different directions. Here we go. We're talking about obviously New York City and then our previous home state of Dallas, Texas. Uh, Manhattan and Brooklyn new lease signings surge in January. Both boroughs had the most new leases during the month of January since 2008, since right before the housing crisis. The number of leases of new leases signed in Manhattan are up 57% from January last year. Meanwhile, Brooklyn had a 46% increase from January 2020. So both boroughs are up almost 50%, if not a little bit more. Um, where's the rest of the story? Hold on. Bear with me, guys. Tell you what, I wasn't expecting to hear these yeah. headlines about Very what's going on. Here in we New go. York. Here we go. Here we go. Both boroughs have seen increases in new lease signings, which does not include lease renewal. So new leases, because of the continued decline, quote unquote, because of the continued decline in net effective median rent, record concessions, and high vacancy, aka rent prices are going down. Throughout the course of the coronavirus pandemic, New Yorkers have been fleeing the Big Apple. Don't we know it? to live in suburbs and other states, wink, wink, Florida, altogether. And because of that flight, rental prices go down. This is supply and demand. This is economics 101. Median rental prices in Manhattan are down 16% compared to last year. And median rental prices in Brooklyn are down 13%. So basically rent went down because people were moving the hell out of there, supply and demand. The enhanced affordability, here's a quote right here. The enhanced affordability caused a surge in new lease signings since September as tenants Move around the city looking for better deals. You're bipping, you're bopping, you're moving around looking for a deal. And inbound migration has expanded. Kai, I know we talked about this yesterday. How much does it cost to rent a, a, a one-bedroom in New York City? So we, Most expensive city in the country. So we found, on average, uh, the number was $2,375. for $2,400. Bucks. Yes. That's so right now. That was, uh, I believe that That's was. That's right now. Yeah. And, that was a twi- and, the, and what uh, was it last year? We saw there was a 21% decrease from last so year. So right now you're talking about 27, 2800 bucks yeah. for a one bedroom in New York City. You're paying almost three grand. Mm-hmm. Okay. So New York's making a comeback. Is that what's happening right now? Is this a good sign, the pandemic? I mean, what's happening in New York? It's a great sign. I mean, we need New York to be strong. Not everybody can move to Palm Palm Beach County. Yeah. All right, I just drove through it. We're here in Palm Beach. You went to Boyne. You went to Boca. You drove back. Yeah, I mean, there's not enough room for everybody to come to Palm Beach. And, and Worth Avenue isn't big enough for everybody to shop on that street as opposed to Fifth Avenue. I think this is great. This is encouraging. I mean, it, it's depressing to me to think that New York was struggling the way it was. I went to New York in February right before pandemic yeah and like literally right before. yeah literally right before and just walking around um times square and, and broadway and everything packed no no, no, no. i can already sense a, a little change in, in how new york was last okay. year right? garbage was you know everywhere and that's just leadership in that city that we could go on about de blasio but we need america to be strong or i mean excuse me for new york city to be strong you know it, it would destroy the country if New York were to, you know, continue to, you know, decline like they were last year. It's still the hub for advertising, for finance, and and for a lot of, for media and for a lot of major important things in this world. So I'm excited to hear encouraging news like this. Exciting, New York making a comeback. Are you ready to move to New York? What do you got, Kai? Uh, let's let's do it. No, I think, uh, <laughs> but I definitely think I agree with Tom in the sense that it's uh, good news because obviously it's it's a turning point. Uh, because all the other stories we've been talking about in New York is them leaving. This person left. That person left. That yeah. company moved. This company One moved. of my closest friends who, who moved down here from New York, yeah. he said every single one of his sing- of single friends moved to South Florida. Every <laughs> single there one. He said all the married people with kids, they stayed there. They, yeah, because you're, you're a little bit more tied down. You're more yeah. established. You know, you're living in Long Island, whatever. But he said every single one, they had wow. the opportunity to move. He's like, yeah, they're all down here in Miami. They're out there. They're out in Brickell. They're out in South Beach. They got the hell out of there. Yeah. But it seems like a year later almost, reality setting back in New York. New York's not dying. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld did a big thing like New York ain't going yeah, nowhere. Don't bet, okay. Don't, don't bet, against, bet against. Yeah, but New that York. was more a pep talk that he was given at the time because it was going somewhere. It was going south. And they and he kind of needed and he almost sounded like he was delusional saying that. But this is good. A positive sign like this can only have ripple effects for the rest of the year. Well, I'll tell you what, man. If you told me a year ago, one year ago, because usually in the summers, so I've been doing the remote work thing like before it was like WFA, work from anywhere, WFH, work from home. I've been working from home, working from anywhere for like 
almost 10 years mm-hmm. now. Like, like people have been wondering, how do you do that? Like remote thing before it was you know, in vogue right now. And I said, so every before I, the word or expression was invented. Ooh, before you've been born, bro. Before our work. Before you've been born. Exactly. And so usually in the summers, I would um, at well, at one point I was dating a girl from London. So I would spend some time in London. We would do the Europe thing. But I always love New York. So if you told me a year ago, and I would spend summers in New York as well, if you told me a year ago, where will you be living during this pandemic, this summer? And you, the options were New York City or Addison, Texas. <laughs> I would be like, bro, it's not what? What are you even freaking talking about? Everything right here? changed. E- things have changed. changed. Things have changed since the pandemic. <laughs> So it's good to see New York City making a comeback. I mean, save that money, move around, find a spot that, you know. Things are on box. sale. I mean, rent's are on down, sale. Uh, vacancy is down, or vacancy's up. So, I mean, it's... it's uh, Yeah, it's but definitely... crime's up, and that's what they got to get their handle on. I mean, crime is way up yeah. in Is New crime York up City. in New York? Really? Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> L.A., big time. Mm-hmm. L.A., big time. Okay, thank you, Sam. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.